Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to, to meet you again today. And uh, thank you to Mark for the invitation. For more than 70 years, we, member of the EU, have been believing that the democracy and the peace are the best way for blossoming and are indissociable. Obviously, in an international stage weakened by wars, tensions, coups, dictatorships, oppressions, Europe looked like a place of peace, democracy, and welfare. We showed our model as one for all over the world. In our mind, the model was exportable to everywhere. But since two or three years, that model seems upset. Globally, peace is no longer guaranteed on our own continents. Ukraine war, ethnic tensions in Kosovo too, terrorism in many countries, even in Germany, threatened. The democratic rules inscribed in the legal basis of Europe are disputed by social movements like the Gilets Jaunes in France, but also in Belgium too, by extremist parties, extreme right, extreme right or extreme left, and even some governments. Hungary or Poland, for example, have been reminded of necessity of media freedom or justice independence. The Brexit itself fragilized the European picture of democracy and peace with all the attacks against the European rules and their consequences. Like on European continent, all over the world, the links between democracy and peace and welfare are challenged. Even if globally democratic states are peaceful, some of them are engaged or threatened by a war. I mentioned yet Ukraine. We can name Taiwan, South Korea, Armenia, and many others. In the opposite side, some autocratic countries are peaceful, at least with their neighbors, maybe not inside. In Central Asia, for example, there is no real war. However, the relationship between democracy and peaceful attitude is no more obvious. But we continue to maintain that one conception of democracy is best one. That our, sorry, that our conception of democracy is worth with freedom, human rights, tolerance. That is our common conviction in Europe. But are we sure that it is also the conviction of all the countries all around the world? Yet, our European, or more precisely, Western model is disputed outside. It appears and is attacked as a volunteer of cultural supremacy by some. More and more, our attitudes about freedom, justice, democracy are rejected or contested. A good example was with the UN resolution damning the Russian intervention in Ukraine. Remember, last year, during the spring session, United States and European Union submitted a resolution damning the Russian intervention for a vote. Yes, the vote was positive, but uh, did you know it? That is very important, with a skinny majority. 
great countries like Russia, India, didn't vote it. And all over, all, uh, and overall, uh, many countries refrained or refused to participate. I, I think it's very important to, to note this that the state voting against, damning or refusing to participate represent more than a half of the total world population. I think that is a very important moment of our democratic view. I think it's a very important moment too for the equilibrium in the world. Maybe we shall have, we will have two global blocks, a democratic one or Western one, and another which is non-democratic, maybe, but even if it is democratic, it is an anti-occidental one. And I think that is very, very important for the future. Mainly countries concerning by that are, yes, India, I yeah, notice, but also many countries from Africa and South, uh, and South or Central America. And I think that this vote is only an emerged part of the iceberg. Generally speaking, we note in Africa and in Asia, in Central America too, movements disputing the Western model in the field of culture, government, military intervention. During a long time, that contestation was the fact of political movements or associations, social media, and the press. And they, they were in the way of telling it's a decolonization attitude. We don't want to be in the same way that the colonization where we were obliged to accept the principles and the rules of uh, the country which uh, were colonizing us. They, they tried to agitate and convince the public opinion. But now there is a changing. Now governments are using the same arguments on freedom and independence. Mali or Burkina Faso, for example, asking uh, European troops to withdraw from the fight against ACME are uh, an example. Supported by Russia or China, that tendencies, because it's very important to note that Russia and China are using that attitude. These tendencies aim at not only the exclusion of uh, every Western military presence, they aim also at a global common position of states who want to determine their own way of government, of economical, social, environmental development, who reject, which reject the Western attitude of sermonizer. This represents a real risk of hard competition and conflicts between two blocks. Those like us who are, I think, great believers in democracy must remember that the democratic regime is never in the nature of things. It is not a one-sided way going from tyranny to democracy. Democracy is always, always fragile. Less than a half of the world's inhabitants are living in a democratic state, and 8% only, only 8% in what is calling a total democracy in terms of election and pluralism, government, political access, political culture, and civil freedom. 
During the past 30 years, we saw all over the world several states alternating their political regime. Chile, for example, from socialism to tyranny and then liberalism or socialism. Brazil, going from socialism to authoritarianism and going back with Lula to socialism, Tunisia, and so on. Don't forget that uh, this is not only an extra European problem. In, in European Union today, we can have many questions about our own political evolution. It's the case of some members and their political evolution when the media's freedom or the power's separation between justice and government, for example, seem to be challenged. It's the case even in our countries, France or Germany, when pandemic or the fight against terrorism lead to restrict some freedom. It's the case when the improving use of informatics by public service or by big companies allow them to interfere with our privacy. So, always, we must think about our practice. Democracy is no longer an obvious fact. Already, Tocqueville, in his book, The Democracy in America, noted that the majority represents the legitimacy to decide for everyone, but immediately he evoked the risk of a tyranny against the minority. Interesting. But today, maybe at the opposite, we must not also a risk of a growing power of active minorities which can impose their views against the majority's feeling. It can be for the best. It can be for the worst. With the help especially of, media so of social medias, who are in growing the opposition. Particularly speaking, among a world of uncertainties, of unsteady balance between numerous nations, of economical rivalities, of ethnic tension, our democratic regimes are facing new and hard threats. New wars, terrorism, nuclear proliferation, pandemic, tension in touch with climate change. With that kind of background, we are facing numerous questions concerning the equilibrium between the protection of our freedom, human rights, and democratic principles, and the necessary protection of our lives or way of life. Can our freedom be limited to have a better protection against our enemies? When? To what border? When our enemies use the democratic principles and the human rights to fight against us, must we abandon it? our conviction, our way of life. Some concrete examples. Individual freedom protects the property, house of car. In, with the reason of fighting against terrorism, some laws in France, for example, allowed police to control each of it, to go into your house or to control your car or to control your identity, even if you are a person without an apparent fault. Maybe it's necessary. Where is, where is the balance? Or the case, uh, I live uh, as a defense minister, the problem of certain arms. Some enemies use, for example, arms, mine, 
with fragmentation, which are not allowed. W what can we do? We know where they are, they use it. What, what will we do? You were speaking about information. It's exactly the same. Will you, we stop the information going from Russia when we say that the freedom of the media are one of the main ways for democracy? But if we don't, uh, we, we have also the problem of disinformation. That are real questions. I, I think uh, there are many, many questions, and I, I, I suppose you, you, you can do. But using, using the same harms or refusing to, to respect our principles, to fight our enemy, uh, what, what will be the consequence? Uh, even if our way is to beckon, uh, is to, to, to be uh, concrete, to, to, to be responsible, using the harm, are we in the way to become exactly like they are, as they are? Would it be our victory using that harms, or will it be their victory, even if we have the apparent victory? I think that are very important question. And to conclude, I should ask one more, maybe the most important: Are we? Western European people, you here present, who, who are living today in democracy and globally peaceful state, are we ready to die for saving the democracy as Ukrainian pe people are ready to die to protect their country? and their freedom. Thank you very much, Madame Dr. Alio Marie, for this uh, really enlightening speech, which I hope uh, will be paid attention to by the leaders in uh, the capitals of the world, and particularly here in Berlin, in Paris, in London, because uh, what uh, you have explained to us how important it is in politics and in international affairs uh, for a state and for a government to be consistent and not to act on the basis of what is often called uh, a policy of uh, double standards and this uh, self-critical approach which you favored and which you convincingly, the importance of which you convincingly explained, that in my view is or uh, would be the essence of uh, a just and uh, stable international order. And you ad addressed so many particular issues concerning um, also the uh, credibility of governments in terms of the methods they use and also as regards the issue whether um, democracies that um, present their practice or states that present their political practice as democracy are really uh, consistent in situations of uh, war and conflict and how one should deal with situations where those states violate the very principles which they propagate. Can one just justify that by pointing to the other side and say he has violated those rules, so we have no other way than uh, to act in the same way. So please, if uh, uh, that now there is the opportunity to specifically address uh, Madame Alio-Marie. 
Madame Marie Marie. Uh, during your speech, you repeatedly insisted on uh, sticking to democratic principles, and France is famous for this. Uh, as you may know, in the last decade at least, Turkey has challenged much, much of the, many of those principles. And uh, from the viewpoint of nations, and especially the ethnic groups, there is a big question. Why, for example, France, that has a kind of powerful stance in the global politics, and we know that when France exerts its power, it normally we see the influence, the result. Uh, Turkey, you, as you may know, the, in northern Syria, there was an enclave practicing socialism and democracy. Turkey ruined this, and it, right now, even amid the earthquake, is attacking the, that region. And we are well aware that they are sincerely practicing democracy, but the Turkish state, which is famous for its racism, is uh, destroying everything there. And historically, as a Kurdish, from a Kurdish point of view, I'm really grateful uh, to the French state, which has always been backing us. And I believe that if the French state was not there, now maybe the Kurdish nation was not, uh, did not exist at all. We have had already a lot of support from France. But uh, I, I'm, I mean that. When we insist on principles, we should stand by it. We should stick to it under any condition and especially for the countries like France that have the power to stick to it and to exert that power, I think uh, there's again a kind of double standard. Keeping a blind eye on what is going on in northern Syria, how uh, uh, in, just inside Turkey, for example, uh, Erdogan is imprisoning tens of thousands of people just because of uh, freedom of expression, uh, let's say, uh, using their own right to uh, express what, uh, their right of uh, freedom of expression, actually. And, uh, and also about this uh, inf uh, uh, flow of information. There is a famous from Iraqi president, late Iraqi President Jalal Taliban. He said, uh, respond to a pen with a pen. So if re really we have a flow of misinformation from Russia and China, we should reply or answer or react with information, not blocking censorship, which will uh, kind of make uh, the people skeptical of the real freedom that is alleged to exist in the West. I would like to hear your comment. Why France is kind of stepping back on these principles that they have been a kind of pioneer for? Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think that France uh, is uh, staying back. Uh, I think we try, but there is, when you are uh, in charge of foreign affairs, there are many ways to act. Uh, some are officials in the United Nations, for example, that's not only the more uh, efficace, je sais pas comment on dit, efficient, efficient. Uh, but I'm not here to, to speak about, uh, ne about uh, United Nations. Uh, other the one are, are in other, uh, uh, in uh, as a circumstances. Uh, even uh, when we, we had an attitude uh, about uh, the volunté of Turkey, not now, but some years ago, to, to go uh, to be a member of the European Union. W we said that there are certain conditions, and we always said Turkey uh, didn't uh, ha have not uh, all the, the condition. It, it cannot go and be a member of the you know, European Union. That's not the, the own uh, reason. But uh, it was also. And during a moment, uh, I, I uh, consider that uh, there, there had been uh, uh, an effort from Turkey to, to do that. Uh, during the last month, I, don't, I considered not, not because of uh, freedom, because uh, of the attitude 
to the women, for example, uh, and so on. But uh, it's not because you, you don't see or the media don't explain what is going that uh, a country like France uh, doesn't uh, act uh, and try to, to have a, major, a better solution. Thank you. We are lacking a second microphone. Is there not a second microphone? So that, so that we save time. And Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you and also for Dr. Kochler about the flow of information about the chan channels of the countries like Iran or Russia that are mm, blocked here. Um, you know, there is something in my mind that when a <coughs> country is using their broadcasting channels at, as a means of propaganda, uh, how can we, you know, I think that it's right to block them because, for example, in Iran, uh, all the channels on, are from government. They don't have, we don't have, I'm Iranian also, we don't have any, mm, you know, private channel. So all of them are a means of propaganda. Uh, so what's the line if we are trying to um, keep the freedom of speech and uh, you know mm, stick to the principles? What's the line between what we are doing and their goals? Um, that's mm. it. It's not easy, it's not why I, I ask you, <laughs> you uh, and I, I tell, I told, you, you, you have to uh, have a re reflection, you have to think uh, about that because it's not easy. Because uh, what uh, we said, and uh, I think that uh, the, the problem of information uh, is a good example. Uh, do we use the same way that they, they do? And uh, is, it, uh, is it possible, is it uh, uh, current uh, with, uh, wha with what, uh, what we are thinking, with our principles? I, I, have, n I have not a solution. Uh, I, I think each, uh, uh, each case needs uh, a, a, a solution, a proper solution. Thank you. Uh, we have got time for one more question. I saw some, uh, please. I'm, um, I was also very struck <coughs> by the, uh, the decision of the General Assembly in the vote that I think it was 35 countries abstained mm. and five countries voted mm. for, uh, for on Russia's side. And uh, uh, that sizable a number of countries showed me that there needed to be some self-reflection on, the, mm. on the, the West. Mm. If there is a structure for that self-reflection, uh, how we treat the, the rest of the world and how they see us. Mm -hmm. I, I w wonder if you had any further thoughts on that. Mm. Uh, I, I think it's important to understand the what is our uh, picture today uh, in that countries and what will be the future? Uh, I think uh, our, uh, our picture uh, is, uh, is not good because we always said uh, we have the truth and we have to impose our vision of truth all over the world. And maybe without the respect that we need to others' country, but also maybe to other civilization, to other uh, way of mind. And that is very important. The, uh, the attitude is as important uh, as the, 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 the thing, as uh, the real thing. Uh, second second uh, problem is what will happen? Uh, I think multilateralism is very important for peace. It's an equilibrium. There are many di different things, but it's important. 
And now uh, we, we had, during the Cold War, a, a bilateralism with real opposition. And I think that France and some other country try to have a third way and to offer to many countries to be non-aligned on US or on, on URSS. Uh, today, uh, I'm, uh, I'm concerned by the risk of having uh, uh, a bilateralism, but with two blocs, one with the uh, United States, Europe, and uh, maybe Australia and, and so on, Japan, uh, for example, but another block with uh, China, Russia, India, sure, and a major part of Africa, uh, maybe South America. And there is a r real risk of a conflict because uh, our interests are very different. And uh, if there is no uh, a capability of comprehension between two, uh, we have all what can uh, drive uh, to a war. And I think here, our most important, uh, our uh, most, uh, most important conviction is that we have to do everything to, uh, to, 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 to preserve the peace for us and for the future generations. Thank you very much, Madame Alio-Marie.